welcome uh, you know this is a fantastic opportunity uh, when i was doing my mch my senior dr shabbar sevri was giving exam and expert uh, to you know arrange all those things uh, then uh, dr rp dev ravi dev came as an examiner most of the people come to exam for the charm of it they take want to take exam ask question and go but after the exam he stayed a day and he called all the mca surgical onco students and he took a fantastic talk on head and neck surgeries and parotid you know that's the passion dr rp dev has and nobody would do this justice to this topic better than him great head and neck surgeon trained extensively with the master and their group you know jp shah in mskcc in fact jp shah fondly always says if you are in india you don't have to come to jp shah you please go to rp dev and uh, excellent teacher very good surgeon he has been a head of of department in the kidwai memorial cancer center before then he is associated uh, in manipal comprehensive cancer center for over almost last two decades not just a good surgeon and excellent head and neck surgeon skull base surgeon and maxillary maxillary sinus surgeon but also a passionate teacher uh, important interested in capturing the surgical photos and making an atlas so it's a honor to invite him and trainees please utilize this opportunity at the end of the talk put your doubts in chat box we'll try to answer as much as possible thank you very much sir over to you good morning welcome thanks for accepting our invitation thank you sir thank you thank you once again navneet and somshekhar good morning to all the people who are wanting to connect whether you learn whether you teach whether you express whether you experience the most most important thing in life is to connect and when somshekhar asked me to talk on this topic applied surgical anatomy of parotid gland approaches and management of parotid tumor i went back into my memory and i realized that i had already devised this lecture in the form of the art and science of parotidectomy which i gave as an oration Dr. T. Manikam Oration way back in 2015, and around this topic, around this concept, my whole talk of today is organized. And we are here. We want to connect to you so that I can reduce your learning curve and how to straighten that learning curve when the time taken by the student matches that. is teacher that means if i have taken 40 years to learn something and you also take 40 years to learn that means i have uh, not taught you that means i have not tried to analyze anything and we need to understand that formulate structure training which will convert subconscious my subconscious subjective gestures into conscious objective surgical steps which will reduce your learning curve and the entire purpose of this endeavor this talk this connection is to do that if you want to become a successful surgeon you need to have inherent talent you need to have desire to learn you need to get exposed to standard surgery you need to have desire and enjoy to do hard work undergo some organized training and we need to understand that surgery is theory as well as practical and theory can be learned only in library through teachers and we need to understand that we need hands on training experience we need to have a desire to excel and once you achieve excellence it is incomplete as long as you don't teach somebody now if surgery is an art as well as a science parotidectomy is the perfect example of it involving differential tissue handling from skin to fascia muscle to ligament vein to artery cartilage to bone nerve twigs to the trunk parotidectomy is the ultimate test of surgical graft surgical craft and commitment and patience if you see this is a, a very narrow constricted restricted area where in between the zygomatic process and the mandible external artery canal and the face the gland is literally wedged as an inverted pyramid now in this is a lifetime journey my story is a lifetime journey 
along the facial through parotid forest with its veins, nerves, arteries and muscles, sometimes skirting the tumor, other times mounting or diving underneath the tumor in the struggle to keep the face smiling and the life going. Through this parotid jungle, stretching from infratemporal fossa to neck, under the skin, over and around the mandible, creeping along external artery canal, going around the ear, flows the mighty Amazon, the facial nerve, dividing, redividing, interconnecting over or under the vessels, flooding the face with emotions, either sad or happy, but never, never quiet. In this forest, rainforest, the surgeon reigns supreme. That means what I mean to tell that pathology of the parotid is a surgical issue from diagnosis, staging, treatment, planning, surgical approaches to excision. We have to be committed. We have to accept that this is a surgical challenge, remaining always alert, at times crafty to save the facial nerve or ruthless to chop it along to, to achieve R0 clearance with the tumor, but always respecting life and caring for the patient. Parotid tumors are very common clinical problem. Parotidectomy is an uncommon surgery in average hand. Patients always fear disfigurement and that is the reason majority of the time the presentations are always late. The reason is that we as a surgeon lack confidence in our own self and we are not able to convey our own confidence to the patient. This confidence doesn't come because of lack of exposure to this kind of a fancy kind of a surgery and we consider this as a fancy item to provide damn name and fame for very few people like me who have gone through this for a long, long time and have achieved perfection. We understand that the times have changed. Physiology has remained constant for millennium, but now we are able to understand it better. And But the psychology has changed. Biology has remained the same. But we have started appreciating it the paramedical sciences are galloping because of the market forces, because of the inventions, because of the new technology. We have a huge amount of paramedical expertise available, huge amount of technology available. But we need to understand that contrary to this, our surgical skills are dwindling and dwindling. The reason is this, that the patient Patient-doctor ratio in the colleges is becoming little lopsided. We don't get hands-on experience. And therefore, it is very important that surgeons may not be forgetting the duties as their surgeon, but as the patients are getting more and more educated, they are getting more and more aware of their rights. Now, we all know that purpose of life is to have a plan and follow that plan B which is natural and desired. However, success of life will depend whether you have a plan B in place. Are you ready with the plan B? Why? The plan B sometimes is forced and unwanted. And being impulsive as the plan A is natural, being compulsive, plan B needs planning. And Plan B is nothing but when you are faced with a situation, how to handle the situation, how, how to transform from plan and A to plan B without agitation and deviation from the path. Now, why I am trying to make you understand this is because irrespective of your anatomical knowledge, irrespective of your surgical skills, irrespective of your uh, Commitment sometimes on table situation is totally different and we need to we need to enjoy them that this journey enjoy the fellowship all along ensure safe excision and reach your destination as far as diagnosis is concerned pathology is clinically straightforward 
we need minimum paraclinical workup. MRI is the only way we can locate the facial with some certainty. Ultrasonography guided FNAC is safe, but not certainly must. In case you are committed that there is a space occupying lesion in the parotid, it needs to be removed, and there is no reason for you to achieve a histopathological diagnosis before. But intraoral examination is must to understand if there is a parapharyngeal extension and, of course, the neck palpation to differentiate from nodal metastasis. Medical investigations, uh, if you see and feel very deeply, you will understand are merely providing objective evidence of our subjective perceptions, which we have been having for centuries. They cannot be substitute good clinical acumen, at least for few centuries to come. And therefore, it is very important that at the end of clinical examination, at the end of first consultation, you should come up with a clinical diagnosis, with a surgical plan, and not totally depend on investigations. Our clinical examination is very important. Optimum paraclinical workup as less as possible is desired. Have to have thorough surgical planning so that you are ready for any clinical eventuality. You should be well trained, troubleshoot any problem unless and until you can solve the complications which are either created unintentionally or gets created forcefully, you need to understand that we, unlike Abhimanyu, should be able to come out of the chakra view and therefore we should be well versed with troubleshooting, foreseeing possible complications. Haro cancer control, we need to understand, that we need to balance like a musician with the words, with the music and the rhythm, the tal, and the most important element in a surgical excision for a tumor for a pathology of malignant nature is R0 clearance and that will ensure successful management. Now, we will go in a methodical manner. Should we do a parotid biopsy? We need to understand that clinical history and examination is good enough to make you understand the need or make you understand the origin of the pathology and it is avoided as far as is possible. You can always perform an FNAC, plan the incision in such a manner that we should be able to convert it into a modified bed incision. If you need, get a frozen section examination and always remember that parotid, thyroid, tonsil are always having lymphoreticular tissue within them and they can be the site of pathology. For instance, this was a patient who had uh, a probably intra uh, parotid pathology and the surgeon felt that this could be uh, tuberculosis and things like that and, and they did a kind of a biopsy which is not required because we should know that how a node at this location will feel and whether we should confuse node for parotid and vice versa. Understand. Not it is always superficial and lateral to sternocleidomastoid muscle. Node is always inferior and medial to SCM and diagnostic. And therefore, even if you are wanting to explore any pathology in this region, explore via modified bears in season. Because remember, revision surgery is the commonest cause of facial palsy. And when we explore when I was called to operate on this patient, it turned out to be a pleomorphic adenoma and not a tuberculosis. One important thing, in general, most cancers are painless to begin with. However, salivary malignancies due to the propensity of perineural spread can present with a mass which is painful. And here is an example in, in, in in question, a man having a rapidly growing parotid tumor, which was associated with pain, fixity to the skin, muscle and bone, facial nerve was involved and there was also 
also presence of lymph node metastasis. So if you have these components, rapid growth associated with pain, fixity either to skin, muscle and bone, facial nerve involvement and lymph node metastasis think that this is certainly a malignancy. Now, superficial parotidectomy should be a minimum surgical procedure for opera all operable parotid masses. Topography governs extent of surgery. Now, it is very important for us to, to realize that the pathology, it may be a benign tumor, it may be a malignant tumor of low grade, high grade, intermediate grade, adeno, adenoid cystic, but that it, it is the location of this tumor in the parotid and its relationship or its involvement or the facial involvement will govern the extent of the surgery and there is absolutely no need to think that if the tumor is in the superficial lobe well contained you need to remove a total gland if there is malignancy so it is very important that understand it is the topography which governs the extent of the surgery and it is the pathology which will decide prognosis and need for further the surgical plan is extremely simple clinical workup have a structural sequence in your mind even when you are draping a patient or for that extent even when the patient is being wheeled in into the operation theater let your algorithm in your brain starts how would you position the patient how would you drape the patient what kind of an incision you want to take once you cut the skin what is going to happen beneath and let your mind go through this journey of surgical, of structural sequence. Identification of facial nerve tongue, facial nerve tracing, excision of the tumor and closure. These are the salient features of a surgical plan. And we need to understand that size does not matter. Even this huge tumor which you are seeing was uh, there in the in this patient of lady who was an old lady and in spite of me removing the whole thing this is the whole thing remember all the parotid tumors must be removed with the capsule intact and after that once i removed it i realized that there was so much of parotid tissue still remaining which could be closed primarily because of the expansion so it is very important for you to realize that sometimes Partial parotidectomy or adequate parotidectomy seems to be justifiable as long as you have achieved R0 clearance. The middle person is this lady now, is she is now some, I think probably 80 plus age and is still living very nicely. Now, what is parotid surgery? Parotid surgery is identification and dissection of facial nerve remains the fundamental surgical step during Parotid surgery, parotidectomy is merely the byproduct. This is one surgery where we need to take care of your OT staff, the nurse, the OT assistants, the scrub nurse, the anesthesia team, and it is very important that the smallest of the things must be taken into consideration. Smallest of the people must be mattering. And here is uh, my old secretary, uh, Mrs. Aisha, who is responsible for most of the pictures which are being shown today. And it was through her help that I could put up this presentation. I am extremely thankful to her. We need to understand that we need to have a plan. Where will be the foot end? Where will the head end? Put a cloth underneath the patient so you can tuck the arms possibly. And you must remember that OT layout is extremely important for any head and neck surgery. We need to have that section of the OT free between 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock and 9. So this semicircle around the head then should be able to go anywhere in between this uh, this arc of rotation so that we can follow the nerve we can see the structures properly and this ot layout must be discussed with the ot staff with the people around remember big people don't do big things but do small things in big way. Now, we need to have certain very, 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 very little instruments 
like we need to have baby Alice, catch for retractor, consular dissector, skin hook, baby mosquitoes, Wilson forceps, tongue depressor. Tongue depressor can be of, of great use in doing retracting the parotid mass, and these are the special instruments we require. I would like you to see very carefully this slide. This is Wilson's forceps, which has a round tip. It's a delicate instrument with double curvature. Unlike an ordinary forcer, which is just below that, you will understand that this double curvature of this instrument from tip to the end is, is very, very useful, adaptable to the body of the parotid when you are tracing the, the nerve. This slide probably is the most important slides for the beginners that they unlike they believe that the facial enters at, at the edge of the parat but remember see this picture very carefully and you'll understand that so much of the parotid trunk is out of the parotid gland and it is only at the end of this which it is entered so unlike common belief the facial does not enter the parotid at its edge but somewhere medial to it and branches out again very important the branching of parotid is not in the same plane it goes like like this it goes like uh, my finger can you see it they are not this is in the same plane now here the planes are different so it branches out in different plane we are ready we have exposed the modified blade incision, everybody knows modified blade incision, fat up, flap up, raise, flap up, fat up, fat down, external artery canal, sternum muscle and digestic. And we need to understand that this is the destination which will matter. God matters, religious don't. How you reach a spiritual end of your life, how you reach whatever God you believe in, what method you use, whether you turn to the west, whether you turn to the east, whether you go to a church or whatever it may be, you need to see the facial nerve. And there are 150 ways of uh, understanding the site of facial trunk and that could be tracheal point and diagnostic. These are the most uh, common. And if you see here, fortunately, I that day could see a beautiful tracheal point. Remember, tragal pointer is not a constant anatomical mark but here you have tragal pointer and you have the posterior belly of diagnostic in one frame and what happens now i personally feel diagnostic as a marker is a safe and fixed surgical guide it can be identified low in the neck totally away from the area of the action sternal mastite will invariably lead to diagnostic diagnostic will move outwards or inwards according to the parotid pathology it is very easy to identify and i think that that should be uh, the the, uh, the accepted truth that it is the most practical method of identifying facial trunk now it is very well known when location is fixed and address is known all that we need to do is to google it destination parotid anatomy is known the facial location is constant, follow surgical structural sequence, the nerve is always there. Now, we need to understand that once you have identified these landmarks, distance to the nerve trunk is not always constant. It is very because the variable amount of parotid substance is lateral to the nerve trunk and which needs to be medialized before you can locate the trunk. Now, this is the reason why the distance is always different because this variable amount of parotid tissue will vary the location of the trunk within it. Also, the anatomy of the stylomastite region will modify the local tissues. The position of the tumor within the parotid substance will uh, whether it is superior or whether it is inferior, superficial or deep, will change the location, will change the topography of the nerve within. And therefore, we need to understand that all these factors must be important, must be kept in your mind because 
we need to be very, very patient while doing identification of the facial trunk because patience on the part of the operative surgeon is very important. As soon as you see the parotid substance, do not start searching the nerve. We need to understand that you see this slide very carefully. There is a very tracheal pointer, diagnostic retractor, and this is a variable amount of loose parotid tissue which is lateral to the nerve and which will have to be brought medially even before you start looking for the nerve. And there we see the tracheal pointer, nerve trunk, major branches, and diagnostic all in, in one frame. Remember, these are untouched photograph. These are practical operative pictures. I have only cropped them. I have not, you know, changed them. I have not touched them. And this is how that day it was. And you see that they are all in one plane, but this may not be there every time. One word, it is possible that sometimes you may not be able to to locate the facial trunk and at that time you need to follow the reverse method if you see here I expose the marginal uh, division of the facial and you can do retrograde exam, retrograde tracing of the facial nerve it is important that you realize that sometimes the anatomy is not fixed you have delicate veins and, and arteries coming up sometimes unexpectedly like in this case you see the external jugular vein and its tiny these tributaries are not under the nerve they are all, all along superficial so it is very important that you understand that learn identify structure as structure vein as a vein artery as an artery nerve as nerve muscle as muscle and put these all inputs in the exposed region you will be able to operate and the most important thing which i learned from my uncle is respect tissues retract as much as the tissue tolerate because parotid has differential tissues and therefore tissue respect is extremely important so many times just by undue retraction and putting suction which is not which is not adequate or suction which is more than adequate to the nerve can cause a lot of problems so we once we have this kind of a knowledge anybody who can raise a neck flap identify external jugular vein greater auricular nerve and sternum and muscle can venture into parotid surgery now, there is a structural sequence irrespective of the incision which you take either you take a modified facelift incision or you take whatever uh, modified blare you have a structural sequence platysma external jugular vein greater auricular nerve parotid tail sternum and muscle level two nodes internal jugular vein posterior belly of digestic mastoid styloid process parotid body tympanic vessel and the facial trunk now i'll take you in a very methodical manner these are structural photographs you see on the left here is the modified bread incision in the pre-auricular location horizontal arm in the shadow of the mandible so that it is not very prominent you can see the reference tattoo marks being made here i have made the tattoo marks for joining properly and the cleavage between the sternicular between the parotid and external canal now here uh, we need as i told you uh, we need to we need to shift the whole parotid medially from the external artery canal so that we will expose the stylomestoid region expose the external artery canal the facial vein gentle traction continue to preserve i strongly advocate not ligating the external jugular vein at all as long as it is possible because ligation of the external jugular vein will create congestion of the operative area congestion of the whole parotid system and you can have unnecessary bleeding once you have done that you need to retract sternocleidomastoid muscle and expose the digestive 
identify the 11th cranial nerve and here you see the uh, diagnostic is there the 11th cranial nerve is there the greater auricular nerve is going here in this case we had to like uh, we had to section it now trace posterior belly of diagnostic shift parotid this is the parotid which is going still laterally we need to shift it and retract as per tissue tolerance you need to understand that there are some general misconceptions the facial is usually much deeper than you expect in your mind facial is much medial than you expect in your mind and it is very important that facial trunk is not a thin structure it is quite robust and thick structure and it is not easy for even a novice to cut it easily so we once we do that we need to understand seventh nerve facial does not enter parotid gland at its edge but much medial to it surge facial just medial to the posterior belly of diagnostic good light tissue respect patients are required avoid compulsive movements monopolar cortis should never be used strong suction which never be used appreciate tissue release and facial venous plane keep on irrigating with lukewarm water and you see the facial tongue at the edge very easily there's no problem about it now once you have identified the facial tongue and seen the branches you will realize that branches are much finer than you expect branches are unexpectedly not in the vein not in the same plane the branching pattern is expectedly un predictable and, and you need to preserve even a minor interconnection because you never know where you will damage the nerve so suppose you have damaged the nerve cortical position and maintained the interconnection the cephalic continuity of the impulse will be carried to the target tissues and, and you will not have any problem it is important that you need to understand that interconnection therefore as you see here these are the, this is a upper branch upper, upper division the lower division and you can see a small tiny interconnection going from the upper division to the lower to lower division and therefore if this connection is maintained and you have little neuroplexia here this nerve will carry the impulse once you have understood this you understand that the nerve branches out in different pattern and plane branches need individual attention follow existing planes align your head and body to the nerve now if you are following this nerve you need to be somewhere standing here so that your head and body is in the same plane and nerve superficial to to vein and tributaries are perpendicular to it now this is a normal uh, setup most of the time the nerve is superficial to vein but as i shown you in, in in my initial slide sometimes it can be nerve can be deeper to it now develop anterior flap as the dissection progress do not develop the anterior flap right from the beginning because it is possible that the terminal branches are coming up unexpectedly and while raising of anterior flap you may cut them so therefore as you go forward in your surgery you develop the anterior flap develop the posterior flap get to the trunk first and then you keep on developing the anterior flap avoid direct nerve contact gentle traction meticulous dissection and you see uh, the you need to keep the external jugular vein system intact all along and avoid tumor rupture rupture keep healthy tissue around it is very important that you allow good, good safe margin around the pathology and keep on focusing on the nerve and nerve branches now once you have done this thing there is no reason for you to worry now is the time that you can ligate this vein and remove the tumor deep it now we need to understand the precise location of the deep lobe is practically impossible clinically however imaging uh, 
can be done, but it is not always accurate. Ultrasonography can be a useful tool. Nerve location can be done better with MRI. However, you need to understand this. Irrespective of the location of the tumor, the, whether it is superficial, deep, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, we need to see the facial trunk. And therefore, I would not harp on understanding whether the tumor is deep or superficial as long as there is no intraoral excision. Here is the case in point. You see, this is the tumor which can be seen, which is the deep flow, and uh, we could do it in a proper manner. However, sometimes you have this kind of situation. Now, wh what do you do? Here, uh, we the tumor accidentally is seen going deep to the upper division, and therefore, we need to be prepared for any su surgical situation. I don't think, therefore, the prior diagnosis is a must. And imaging is mandatory. Do you need to remove the entire superficial lobe? I don't think it's a must as long as you get adequate exposure of the tumor and you can remove it. And uh, if you leave it, how to go about it? We will tell you. In, in, in. So this was one case. The other cases you can see here, this is a normal parotid gland, which is being lifted by the deep lobe tumor. You can see very nicely here, the interjugular vein, the spinal accessory, the posterior of digastric and tumor probably in the, in the, so we need to understand this, that if the superficial tumor can be removed without disturbing the underlying deep lobe, why can't the deep lobe be removed? without disturbing the overlying superficial lobe. And this is the philosophy with which we treated this patient. This is the tumor which was in the fork of facial nerve and we have removed the tumor. Sometimes we get the nerve being totally stretched on the tumor. It is very important that you can see that this nerve from the trunk to the division to the level is being is stretched totally on the tumor and here we need to understand that instead of working on a stretch nerve instead of trying to lift a stretch nerve from the underneath tumor it is always better to release the tumor from the deeper connections release it from deep and bring it superficially so release and deliver the tumor by inside out method rather than working on a stretch nerve and that will ensure proper function. What is very neural plane? Unless and until you uh, operate yourself, you may not be able to understand. But here is a beautiful example. You can see the facial uh, lower division is actually going into a tunnel here and this is known as perineural plane and we need to respect the perineural plane and follow existing planes if the planes are, are not opening up if the planes are not giving way to your progress try to understand that it is possible that the nerve is infiltrated and therefore we should not create artificial things what is nerve involvement how a nerve which is either which is either involved or seems to be affected so first we will lose natural planes we will have perineural edema we can have nerve edema we can actually have nerve being infiltrated and last but not the least nerve can actually go through the tumor now here is the case in point here you see that the lower division at this point is actually going into this mass. And this is the patient wherein I had shown you in the beginning mass, which was painful. And here there is no other choice than cutting the nerve. And therefore, once we have done this right from the beginning, we should be prepared to deal with the situation and do the repair on the table. We were prepared sural graft, sural graft in place, and this is the sural graft, and cable graft was in place, and the man pitching and seeing and looking as, as cheerful as he was before. 
sometimes it's possible that we we need to operate on young girls that do not manage very well in the first first setting here is the case in point this girl had this kind of a scar and we need to we needed to incorporate this scar into our uh, incision and here i have, I have modified modified a uh, modified facelift incision you see we have respected everything which is going up in this nerve remember that till uh, you are certain respect every structure going in the direction of the nerve so that that you accidentally don't damage the nerve and here case in point i have respected all these twigs which are going which are looking like nerve but the actual nerve is this and this was achieved this we removed the entire tumor we did the sternocleidomastoid transposition and the girl looks beautiful we need to understand that deep low parotid tumor has variables of too many kinds and either it can be deep to the trunk it can be deep to a division it can be deep to a terminal branch it may have parapharyngeal extension but sometimes you have this kind of a situation here is the case in point you see we have tried to see the facial nerve and you will see uh, very easily that when the tumor is deep to the in the deep lobe it is very easy to identify the facial nerve but it is very important for you to understand that in such cases the nerve is very vulnerable because you get the nerve very fast in your course of dissection and you need to be very careful as in this patient within no time see uh, we was about we were preparing to see the nerve we had already shifted the whole parotid substance we are thinning out the areolar tissue and we got the nerve immediately so it is important that you understand now we have seen the nerve and you see tumor is being visible here and you see the tumor here we are very we were very much excited that everything is over we have seen the nerve the normal parotid gland is preserved and we went on we we were very happy dissecting and then we understood that there was something here which needed to be taken care of and that turned out to be a dumbbell tumor you see very nicely the tumor is the, the deeper part is coming out 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 and here the whole thing is removed this is a classical uh, dumbbell tumor we call it this is a dumbbell tumor you have and you see these are the you know pseudopods of a pleomorphic adenoma we sometimes uh, will get a huge deep lobe tumor extending into the parapharyngeal space and uh, probably these are the patients wherein a parotid tumor has a deep component which is going into the parapharyngeal space and hardly there is anything in the lateral probably these are the cases this is a huge mass going uh, you know the skull base and extending right up to the you know probably up to the epiglottis and these are the cases wherein we need to take care of these uh, tumors by uh, literally doing a uh, mandibular swing here you will see the plates are in place we have raised the gum periosteum flap we flip the mandible and uh, the tumor is is removed completely and this is the way uh, we we go about so up till now i have taken you through a normal small parotid tumor to a recurrent parotid tumor to variations of deep low to fixity or the infiltration of the nerve to a dumbbell tumor to the mandibular swing and we need to understand that sometimes we cannot not preserve the nerve and do the primary excision immediately because the pathology is very bad and at that time we need to do this we need to do radical parotidectomy exposing the neck exposing the mandible and ligating the external carotid artery which goes and this is the tumor being removed completely and, and this is what would be a costly picture and certainly we need, need to understand that whatever happens 
we know that once you cut the facial nerve, your emotions, your reactions, your probably speaking, eating, everything, your, your entire communication may get disrupted because your image gets disrupted. Uh, you know, disrupted, your speech gets disrupted, and you become, uh, maybe, probably, you tend to become a recluse, but we need to understand that we are dealing in the domain of cancer, and that time, sometimes you have to do unpleasant things. This is radical parotidectomy, the entire uh, temporomandibular joint, ramus, angle of the mandible, the ramus, the diagnostic, extracurricular artery is being cut, you see the entire neck section, and that is what it is. However, we, we, we need to understand that we would like to achieve this uh, thing, wherein you have poorly white facial nerve intact and patient doing well. We need to also understand that if, if you want to preserve these delicate branches, you must not allow this train to touch and it should always be tucked in. So we need to understand that till we place the drain, parotid surgery is not over. I hope that in another two minutes we'll close this session. You will be ready to ask any questions. But before you ask any question, always remember Irrespective of your skill, your experience, your technical details, there are patients wherein you will have this scene that this lady is having problem of closing the lid, neuropraxia of the upper division, which I never expected. So you need to understand, only way to avoid complication is not to operate at all. And therefore, every patient, irrespective of the size of the tumor, irrespective of your skill, you should always have informed consent. Always tell them that if I preserve the nerve, function will be preserved. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, day after. If not this week, next week. But it will always come. And therefore, we need to make them understand that at times, anatomical continuity does not result in functional integrity immediately. You can have bleeding. The reason is this, that these tiny, can you see this small tiny vein, they enter into a huge drainage system and if it snaps here, it will go deep. You will not know a bleeding point and therefore you need to have patience. Do not use undue suction, hasty clamping, Try to identify bleeder carefully by just making a fluff of your gauze, dabbing, saline irrigation rather than suction, and then bipolarizing. Stray syndrome is a common complication. Only 20% patients become symptomatic. Apparent nerve regeneration is the etiology of this irritating complication. You need to use, you need to raise thick skin flaps. Fat up, fat down. Can do some kind of interposition plasties like alloderm, temporalis, sternocleidomastoid muscle. And here is a case in point. We have done a total parotidectomy. The nerve is bare like electrical cable. And we did transposition of sternocleidomastoid muscle and the patient is, is more or less normal. I sincerely, from bottom of my heart, I always tell people that at this young age, Som, whenever he has gone to the dais, has given the impression of his maturity, his technical skills, his surgical experience. But at the end, he has always given truth to his audience, stuck to his points, made teaching as his primary aim if i am not taking your time i attended one of his uh, very beautiful demonstration wherein he was doing he was speaking in a big gathering where he was talking on robotic thyroidectomy 
and his opening sentence was i am going to show you this but i firmly believe there is no better method to remove or deal with thyroid neoplasm than hand robotics are very selective please do not get under this impression that when i have shown you everybody can do it so i am thankful to so for putting me in the same league for appreciating me not for my age not for my status but for the passion of teaching thank you very much i thank namneet for taking me through this i am literally a computer illiterate i can only press buttons i would invite everybody to give some comments ask questions remember no, no question is stupid only answers are stupid thank you very much navneet ji so i don't know whether you are listening or whether you are doing some surgery i'm sure you are into operation theater but anyway line thank you very much line. every line i'm listening sir wonderful talk you know it's awesome i can you can speak on this topic for 5 hours and people will be glued and mesmerized and i told you sir so oh, make me retire i am telling you make me retire exploit me super and sir you know not only some students lot of teachers have logged into here dr hitesh andaria who is a head and excellent surgeon from ahmedabad uh, okay. lg municipal hospital has also logged in and he is writing excellent comment that is so so happy and honored to listen to you and thanking me actually for no reason when you are giving the talk excellent no, i sincerely mean so otherwise i would not be citing that sentence wherein you told in the beginning of your talk where you were invited given fair hospitality free of cost the that i am here to talk on robotic surgery but believe me i am telling you best way to remove the thyroid problem is operating my hand that is the reason why i spoke that that's a true truth always prevails sir fantastic talk uh, there are Thank some you. question i'll read it out for you you can guide them rhythm yeah. shah student and uh, he is asking sir can you ask us what is the type of neck dissection we need to do in parotid malignancy when is when is neck dissection required when is sohnd required when is mnd required in parotid neoplasm very beautiful question we need to understand this we need to understand the biology of the tube now it is very important for you to understand that irrespective of lymphoreticular tissue within the parotid gland itself by and large salivary gland tumors have very low propensity to have lymph node metastasis and therefore unless and until there is a evidence of clinical or pathological nodal involvement i personally would just do a minimum elective neck dissection maybe probably you can can do level 1 2 3 in an established malignancy as an elective neck dissection and i personally feel that more than that is not necessary because the rule is very simple if the propensity of the incidence of nodal metastasis goes more than 20% you do elective neck dissection and as far as i am concerned salivary gland tumors particularly of parotid some mandibular gland tumors are known to go to nodes but parotid salivary neoplasms are are not too into going into the nodes and therefore i would not do elective neck dissection elective neck dissection can suffice level 1 2 3 that should be enough and then you do the treatment post operative i have not uh, told you post operatively probably if you have done an elective neck dissection and level 1 2 3 are positive you can radiate this patient but you need not do a radical neck dissection for parotid tumor absolutely beautifully said so students the message is there are some subset in head neck cancer we don't do a routine neck dissection one is no, a parotid don't. malignant tumor and second is like you don't have a t4 maxilla unless there are clinical nodes so the answer you have to say as per david i is in a low grade malignant neoplasm no role of neck dissection either elective or therapeutic if there are no clinical nodes only in high grade parotid malignancies you may do a staging neck dissection but otherwise no need to address the nodes in an n0 low grade malignant neoplasm yes sir so 
the answer and there are two trials one from mskcc and md anderson as professor dr dev told the chance of occult node metastasis in the neck in parotid malignancy is less than 3% when it is low grade it is 15% when it is high grade so only high grade parotid neoplasm staging neck dissection not therapeutic unless there are positive nodes sir uh, next question is uh, sir what is the difference between a Blair incision and a modified Blair incision. This is uh, from Kalyan Singh Kothwal student. Uh, I have not been able to tell you from, you know, because of paucity of time. You know, so in the past, we used to really take the horizontal rim of this incision way up into the thin post auricular skin. Now, this kind of incision used to cause uh, necrosis of the skin because the skin was very thin. And nowadays, modified Blair incision, which remains anterior to the external auditory cholera. You do not take the Y extension, which goes behind. And that is the difference between the standard incision, which used to be taken before. And now the modified Blair remains constantly anterior to the to the extra articula absolutely superb sir correct uh, sir there is one more question from nikunj uh, sir can you explain about neuropraxia in parotid surgery what are the average time they may take to recover theoretically it is said that the patient which i showed you so in my presentation it took six months but we need to understand first and foremost the extreme branches are prone for neuropraxia that means the zygomatic branch and the marginal branch because these are the thinnest branches these are the longest branches and it is very important that if you want to avoid neuropraxia very minor details have to be followed keep the tissue moist keep irrigating with warm saline do not use monopolar at all even bipolar remove the tissue little away and then bipolarize and no accidental touching now in spite of this sometimes you get neuropraxia and probably the reason is this that all our ot lights do not give cold light everybody does not have the luxury of som to operate in great theaters like manipal he has certainly earned that right he deserves that but all other lights can cause heat you can have accidental suction which is going up and that can bother so it is very important for you to understand that practically it is impossible to avoid at times neuroplexia but as long as the nerve anatomy is intact function will return but you have to assure this patient electrical stimulation may help but if you have preserved the nerve the function will come you may have to wait superb question students you must understand this in exam there are three conditions one is a temporary weakness of the facial nerve because the tumor would stretch it coil the nerve and when you remove the tumor it uncoils that itself is a minor trauma for a neural lemma of the nerve second thing is recurrent laryngeal nerve third is hyperparathyroidism and until six months from the day of surgery is over you should never label it permanent as per the head and neck complication el strong there is a beautiful book on complication of head and neck from bethesda maryland by el strong read that book it is a thousand page book it is the monogram of head and neck surgery beautiful book three th conditions recurrent laryngeal now parathyroid hypoparathyroidism and the neuropraxia in facial now six months is minimum for you to label it as permanent so uh, let the students know that there are three kinds of demonstrating the facial nerve intact you see face without any action, normal face, and you have no deviation. Second, you ask the person to twitch immediately, instantly he can do that. Great. Third, you when you tell them to do, they are able to twitch. But otherwise, when they are talking, the nerve is being pulled on the other side. So it is very important for you to grade the neuropraxia is the face normal at rest can he voluntarily perform the action that means close the lid twist the angle if these two things are there but little time is being taken the function will return but sometimes what happens there is 
a grade of neuropixia which is little more and the patient will start either moving either mo moving the mandible he may start moving the lip and that means there is serious neuropraxia so from position at rest voluntary twitching and when you give the command not only he is not able to do immediately but he starts moving something which is not to be moved this is because of the reinforcement which is being taken place so it is important that uh, we need to appreciate and grade your neuropraxia but as i told and as you are telling if the anatomy is kept intact function should return Superb, sir. Sir, uh, one student, Ridham Shah, is asking, sir, steroids and all this nerve vision, neurovitamins, do they help? <laughs> I, I really uh, do not uh, know, and it is not correct for me to cite these kind of things because we have not run a trial. But uh, so, my, let me share you one uh, very nice thing. One of my very good friends is one, his, his probably mother. I operated, and she had. Neuropraxia, and we gave ginseng, ginseng, which is a Chinese herb, and it returned. So I personally feel that some neurotropic uh, drugs or herbs may be helping, but I would not recommend it on a routine because we have not done any trial on that. Absolutely. Sir, if the nerve margin is positive, how much far we should cut the nerve? Then you have to go to the gastrointestinal ganglia. I personally feel that if the nerve is involved and you may go up to, you can, you know, do mastoidectomy and you can trace the nerve into the intra mastoid root, but uh, between me and you, so if the nerve sheath is damaged or is you know infiltrated this is a very bad biology and even if you go to the gasserian ganglion because the kind of tumor infiltration or the kind of power the tumor has to travel will certainly result today tomorrow into distant metastasis and i would rather not stretch my surgical limits to the skull base Absolutely, you're right. That, that scenario happens in adenoid cystic carcinoma. Students, remember, adenoid cystic carcinoma of parotid, we all know that the most common is mucopidermoid in parotid, but the adenoid cystic is more common in minor salivary gland, 50%, and one-third in submandibular. The adenoid cystic carcinoma is the only place an aggressive tumor with the aggressive surgery can give long-term survival, and low-grade adenoid cystic with lung metastasis when you treat both, still they are cured. So that's so the only point, and you may have to go as Sir, there are a lot of questions, but as to always tell the students every Saturday, don't think that the purpose of teacher like you and us is to spoon feed them. They are not in LKG, UKG nursery. We show a direction. You gave so many knowledge. You stimulated their brain. You gave the ideas. You showed what all can be read and what all is there. Now they have to walk their path on their own and enhance on what you taught. So we show and enlighten, show the path they have to walk. So all and, and, and when they are walking on the path, let them enjoy the surrounding beauty too. Let them enjoy the companionship. You know, there is a, there was a very knowledgeable man who was asked by his student that, sir, we are uh, going and what is important, whether the destination is important, whether the, you know, Journey. things by the side are important important he told the company is important so i personally feel that the the fellowship which we developed during this one hour program is more important than anything i have given you guidelines i have shown you some kind of a pathway let them explore that superb sir sir thank you very much sir heartfelt thanks from uh, dnb and thanks a lot for remaining out of the operation theater for for such a long time i could not get you before like this i am thankful Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, over to you, Navneet Singh uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Ravi Dev, for the presentation. And thank you very much, Professor Dr. Soma Shekhar, for joining us. And thank you, trainees and faculty members, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. You can close the... Uh, can I close the presentation now? Uh, yes, yes sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you.